I'm at the Royal Highland Show, joined by Neil Stoddart of Creole Maritime and David Leslie of uh, James Jones. And uh, we're talking about this electric timber truck. Guys, can you tell me a little bit about how this project came together? Sure, John, yeah. This is probably the culmination of two years' uh, work. Uh, came about through initial discussions with Neil Park at Volvo Truck and Bus. He's the MD for Scotland and North England. And we were just discussing how we were going to move uh, move the game forward and get electric trucks and possibly hydrogen trucks in the future out to work. A lot of people talking about them, a lot of people asking about them. Volvo's initial concerns were forestry is a, a heavy duty uh, cycle of work. You know, forests, logs, hard on trucks, steep ground, mountains, bad roads. And I kind of explained, yeah, it is, but we use HGVs throughout the supply chain. Uh, within sawmills, moving from site to site, and also a lot of what I'm involved with with shipping. Yeah, we take logs in, um, and we take logs out of piers, ports, and harbours. So generally, good roads, tarmac, hard surface, and most importantly, sawmills and ports and harbours tend to have good power supplies, vital for an EV truck. So we started looking at work cycles, work routings, to see how we could integrate. Obviously, the cost of these trucks is significantly more than standard diesel units. So we sought help and we got that from Scottish Forestry uh, in a way of support. And really the last six months, eight, well, year, has been pulling that support together, working out how we can make that uh, functional, making sure we can make it happen. So we've got two trucks on the road. David will tell you about this one with James Jones. The second one is going on the road with Scott Log in Inverness. And these trucks are going to be leased. We don't know what they're going to be worth in three or four years' time and we don't know how successful they're going to be. I'm positive they will be successful because we've done our homework, but leasing allows us you know, a little bit more flexibility. So it's really been, i say, two, two years' work to, to get to this stage. Okay, so David, uh, is this truck uh, going to be working for James Jones then? Yeah, um, we've had a long-term association with Volvo, um, Volvo Trucks, and um, we've currently got 25 Volvos on the road at the moment and so we've got vehicles on lease and, and purchase through them and we've been working closely with Neil and Volvo to pull together this partnership. Um, we saw the need to, um, we've got aspirations toward net zero and how we can achieve it and um, running 42 HGV vehicles across the country we decided that it was a very good option to try this at Lockerbie. Mm. Um, the great thing of Lockerbie is that we actually have clean electricity, so we have the Eon power station, biomass power station on our doorstep. We have a private wire supply to the sawmill, which means that the, that power comes direct to the sawmill, and therefore it will go direct to this charger beside us, um, which will power the truck uh, while it's working with us. We've agreed a three-year lease, which um, Neil is helping to manage, and that will run this truck. We're, we're actually going to use it to haul sawn timber between our main sawmill site and a site about three to four miles away where we have secondary processing and a distribution yard. So it gives an ideal opportunity to run that track, truck back and forth and charge it at night. And it's a relatively short distance initially, but we have the option to actually use the truck in the forest with logs. The, the truck is currently hitched to, a, to a, a, a trailer that will carry logs, got logs on it, and we can also haul co-products co and take wood to our customers. So it's a, a really good trial of the lorry. We'll run it alongside uh, an HGV truck, so we'll look at the telematics of both vehicles mm. and see how it performs, what it costs, um, you know, one big surprise to me this, this week was actually you get free tax disc for a car, you actually get a free tax disc on an electric truck. So that's, right. we're, so we're one better. step up. Yeah. Um, but just to see how it performs in that environment, what mileages we get, etc. So, and it's a really good PR thing for the industry. It's the first truck, um, really, you know, one of the first EV Arctics in, in Scotland, but coming into the timber industry. Timber industry is the greenest industry we have. It is the route to net zero. And actually, we've had Lorna Slater here mm. um, to see the truck for about 20, 25 yeah. minutes yeah. Um, this morning. And I'm saying that gives us the opportunity to get these ministers in and talk timber, mm -hmm. talk how trees sequestrate carbon and how we can store carbon in timber, in mm -hmm. construction products. And that's, that's the, the best route to net zero. 
this is part of it. Yeah. And it's going to be your drivers, of course, who are going to be using the, the truck. What are they, and on some quite challenging roads, we know that uh, you know, a lot of forest tracks and, and roads are, are not, uh, not the greatest uh, conditions to be working in. Um, what do they think about the idea of switching to electric vehicles? Um, well, this, this truck will be largely on the highway. Yeah. But as we've agreed with Neil, we re will run it yeah. into the forest and, and Volvo will see how it performs mm. in the forest. We'll probably let some other dri drivers use it. Um, we run electric forklifts and electric side loaders in the group. And great scepticism from all the drivers. You know, re really, really interesting seeing how they react to it. So using this as a demonstration to people to sort of just dip their toe in the water mm -hmm. because we won't rely on James Jones buying this truck. We're using two to 300 HGVs as a group of which we have 42. Mm -hmm. So we're relying on individual contractors you know, to buy these trucks in the future. So mm -hmm. we, we, we can use this as a demonstration vehicle to let them see how it performs and everything. Mm -hmm. And Neil, this is a, a project that's it's actually come together fairly relatively quickly yeah. considering how long these things uh, usually take. Um, what do you think the likelihood is that uh, this could become a very common site and, and in use across the, the industry? Yeah, I think, I think John, we, we've got to manage everyone's expectations. And like any new technology, there's a lot of naysayers and a lot of doubters. And really that, that's what inspired me to try and push this forward because unless we try it, we won't know. If we try, we might. If we, if we don't, we definitely won't. So really putting these two trucks on the road allows, as David said, to, to check the fuel economy, to check the running costs, to check the robustness. And at the end of three years, we'll have a really deep portfolio of information. Interestingly though, uh, yeah, the, the, the project has had like a two year gestation period. It's pretty quick. Being very fortunate that symbiotically to some of our ideas, Volvo have been pushing hard and fast in the development. I was out in Gothenburg uh, with some James Jones guys, I think last September, and we got a chance to see the production line, really inspired with how much Volvo were investing. Um, already, there's been a small amount of PR surrounding this truck and the other one. And speaking of a Volvo managing director yesterday, he said inquiries have already started just because people have seen. Now, if you're a, a fleet owner, we're not talking about timber here, but if you're a fleet owner on general haulage or tankers or whatever, and you've got 30 trucks and you start to look over the hedge and see what others are doing, well, it's like David said, they run 42. Well, if you run 40, you know, 30 trucks, everyone wants to move towards net zero to, to go down that path. They're all starting to say, well, maybe we should be trying one. Mm. That's changed from the opinion 12 months ago of, no, no, that'll never work. Well, actually, it must be working if James Jones are trying it, one of the leaders in the industry. So there's a real inertia building already. We haven't even, you know, this truck isn't on the road for another week. Mm -hmm. The Scott Log truck will be another six weeks, but already the interest has spiked and we're going to see more and more of these and, you know, more and more trucks on the road for sure. There is, uh, you may be aware of some of the, the things around um, ESG and carbon, but mm. people are now looking at scope one, scope two and scope three. Um, where where the carbon is coming from yeah and there's a lot of pressure coming through industry through our customers going right down the supply chain asking people to decarbonize and that initially has been in scope one and scope two so it's the things we do ourselves with our mills and we're decarbonizing in our mills biomass plants electric mm -hmm. vehicles but now they're asking beyond that supply chain what's happening so what are our contractors doing about it? Mm -hmm. You know, what you know, what are, what are the true statistics about this vehicle? Because that's where people are asking questions. It's mm -hmm. fine mm -hmm. that it's net zero, but what does that mean? You know, it doesn't use diesel, but we've got batteries. Mm -hmm. You know, can we calculate what the real net zero position of this truck yeah. is versus a diesel truck? Because this isn't really net zero, there's a lot of manufacturing costs. Right. So all this thing that have been forming our contractors, our suppliers, about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of it's about PR, but a lot of it's about information. Mm -hmm. So, you know, really, really important. You, you, you were asking there, John, about what this vehicle's like to drive, what it would be like to drive in the forest. Having, having driven it myself out on the Volvo test track in Gothenburg, it's pretty demanding. Um, they're very easy to drive. Uh, you, you've got three different settings, uh, of course, for regeneration, just like an EV car, mm -hmm. so it will recharge uh, one pedal operation. The dashboard, the interior, the layout is almost 100% the same as a standard FM diesel truck. 
So there's nothing in there that a driver's going to jump in the gear shift, automatic, mm. just the same as a, an eye shift in a standard Volvo. So drivers will take to this. And actually, the torque that is available, I mean, this truck is 660 horse, mm. you know? Uh, that's that's T-shirt material for, for truck drivers, you right. know? And, that, <laughs> and, and Volvo did that specifically, you know, 666. That is the number of the beast. <laughs> so they're looking to get into that side of it, but very easy to drive. Um, reliability wise arduous heavy duty work a lot of these trucks going back two years that was my initial question will they last in the forest environment Volvo have had electric drive trains working autonomously in trucks and quarries in Sweden under test conditions for many years now and of course electric buses have been on the go for four or five years same drive trains same technology so whilst it's new to us and new to see on the road a lot of this tech has been about for a while and I'm, I'm fairly confident it will be robust yeah, and we will we will take this truck to to shows. That's the intention, and we've done it with our other vehicles. But this truck's coming to Truck Fest, I think, here at Ingleston. Yeah, August. Yeah, um, August. And, and we'll go to other events around the country as you know over the next three years. That's the agreement with Scottish Forestry and and you know promote James Jones, Creel, and and the timber industry. Yeah. Excellent. Well, keep an eye out for it on uh, at the showgrounds, uh, David and Neil. Thank you very much for talking to me. Thanks, John. Thank you, John.